So we're going to look at infinite limits. Sometimes when you plug in a certain value for x or looking at your limit as you're approaching that certain value, it's like, well, the output gets really, really big or extremely big but negative. And you can see that if you plug in 2.5, you get out 6. But plug in 2.01, you get to 3,000 or 300. 2.001, you're at 3,000. Just in the other side, you're at negative 3,000. You can see that the, as you get closer and closer to 2, these values start to skyrocket both directions without bound. And you can see that looking at your graph. Just to the right of 2, you can see your graph goes up forever. Just left of 2, you can see your graph goes down forever. So we would say on this that your left-handed limit, notice a little negative exponent on the 2, of your function 3 over x minus 2 is negative infinity because it goes down forever. Or to the right over here, it goes up forever. Now, we do need to make a determination here of something different. Your limit exists, and we would put equals if it equals a number. We're only describing what it's getting close to. It does not exist, so we have to say and put an arrow in here, not an equal sign. So you put an equal sign in there if it equals a number. If it's going to one of the infinities, then you put an arrow in there. So just be aware of that. So here... If, when you're looking at your limit as you approach C, if it goes up or down forever, we would say it's an infinite limit. So, make sure that you don't put an equal sign in here, even though it's kind of talking about that. If it's going to one of the infinities, we're going to put an arrow sign. Okay? So just be aware of that your limit exists and equals a number you put equals. If it does not exist, then we put an arrow if it's going to one of the infinities. Now down below, we're going to look at vertical asymptotes, and that's where we would have these infinite limits occurring. Vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator is zero. So what would cause the bottom of this to be zero? Well, you'd have to set x plus 1 equal to zero, and you would get x to be negative 1. So that would be your vertical asymptote. Here, on the second one, you'd want to go ahead and find your vertical asymptotes by setting the bottom equal to zero. Well, the easiest way to do that is, first of all, to factor it, because you have differences of squares. Then you set each one of these parentheses on the bottom equal to zero, and you get actually two vertical asymptotes when the bottom is equal to zero. And that's when x would be equal to negative 1, coming from the first parenthesis. And x is equal to positive 1, that would be your second parenthesis. So once again, when you think of cotangent, cotangent, once again, is cosine over sine. So your vertical asymptotes are going to occur when the bottom is equal to 0. So you'd have to set the bottom equal to zero. When is sine equal to zero? And then you'd have to think on your unit circle. Oh, yes, all that unit circle stuff. Don't we just love that unit circle stuff that you're supposed to have memorized from pre-calc? So remember, sine is your y value. And you got to think, oh, my y value is zero here and here and here. So that's at zero, pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, and so on. So any multiple of pi is really what we're saying. Now, we have said on these first three that whenever your denominator is zero is a vertical asymptote. Not always. Because if you set the denominator equal to zero on this one, you would get two and you would get negative two. Well, because we have a common factor here, top and bottom, you would not have a vertical asymptote that what would cause that to be zero. Whenever you have a common factor, top and bottom like that, you should remember that that ends up being a whole. So you only have a vertical asymptote that what causes the bottom to be zero after your function is simplified. After we simplify it, you look at what causes the bottom to be zero. That's where you have a vertical asymptote. 
since we have a common factor top and bottom here at whatever causes that x minus 2 to be 0, that's where we would actually have a hole. So, in general, vertical asphytopes occur when the denominator is 0 and the numerator is something other than 0. So, if you would have tried that here, plugging in um, 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom, you get 0 over 0. If they're both 0, that's once again an indeterminate form if you're looking at limits, um, then you'd have issue. But once you simplify it, then you look at what causes the bottom to be 0. So, let's go ahead and look at these limits. So we're wondering what happens when you try plugging in 0 here to this function. So looking at it graphically, as you get close to 0 from each side, what do we approach with our y values? Well, x being 0 has no effect here on this one. x being 0 has no effect there. Basically, x being 0, well, we can't divide by 0, but we're looking at our limits. So what happens if you plug in something extremely close to 0? Well it ends up being a small positive number because of the squaring. Whether you try a number just to the left of zero or just to the right of zero, the squaring makes it a small but positive number. Well, one divided by something positive and something small would be something really big, meaning one of the infinities. So basically you have one plus something really big, one plus one of the infinities, we would say is infinity. So does this limit exist? No, but we are going to put e or not in equals, but an arrow, and we're going to say positive infinity. So we're saying with the arrow, it does not exist, but we're putting the arrow down. So we're describing what's going on. So it's still useful information. Looking at the next one or that next two, we're dealing with cotangent. So first of all, let's go ahead and remember your cotangent graph. So your cotangent graph, oops, sorry, looks pretty much like this, and then continues on. And same idea over here. That's what your cotangent graph looks like. So this one here says, take your number just to the right of zero, and you just to the right of zero, you can see you go up forever. So just to the right of zero, it ends up being infinity. So you really have three times something big. Three times something really big is even bigger yet. So in other words, this would diverge towards positive infinity. We would say it converges and does exist if it was approaching a certain number. So we're going to go arrow positive infinity. This one here, well, we'd have to figure out if we plug in number just to the left of one. And in this case, if we would graph just this right here, this would be one. The next vertical asphytope here would be at two. This vertical asymptote over here would be at negative 1. So this is saying just to the left of 1, what's going on with your cotangent graph? Well, here's one just to the left of 1, just to the left of 1. You can see your red graph goes down forever. So we would say the bottom goes towards negative infinity. Now, on top, we could essentially plug in that 1. We get 1 plus 1. So in other words, we get 2 over a big but negative number. Well, 2 over a big number is something small close to 0. So this whole thing right here does have a limit. It's approaching a certain number, so we'd put an equal sign, and we would go 0. So here we have an, an albino squirrel riding on the back of a polar bear in a blizzard. 